In this video, we're going to learn a simple approach to time the execution of a section of code in C. So for example, let's say we want to time the execution of a call to a function. We'll make a simple function. The function will return no value. We'll call the function function. It's going to have no parameters. And the function will have a loop with a counter variable i that's going to go from zero up until, but not including, 100 million by one with each loop iteration. And all that's going to happen in this loop body is that we'll set a variable of type int called result equal to i plus one. So this function does some work and we want to time the execution of a call to this function. So what we'll do is include the library time.h. This library includes a function clock as well as a type clock underscore t and a preprocessor constant clock per second. We'll use these to time the execution of this function. So if we call the clock function in the time.h library, this function is going to return the processing time since the program began execution. That value is going to be of the type clock underscore t. We'll declare two variables of type clock underscore t, start and end. And what we'll do is call clock and record the start time with start is equal to the return value of calling clock. Then we'll have our section of code that we wish to time. In this case, a call to our function. Now after this, we'll call clock again, and this time we'll store the return value into the variable end, with end is equal to clock. So first, we record the start processor time, then we run our section of code, then we record the end processor time. If we subtract the start processor time from the end processor time, that will give us the total execution time elapsed. So down here, we'll have end minus start. Now these are of the type clock underscore t. To get the time elapsed in seconds, what we'll do is divide end minus start by the preprocessor constant clocks per second. Then, we'll assign the result here to a variable of type double called time. So we'll have double time and we'll assign the result to this variable with time is equal to the result of this expression and we'll have a typecast to a value of type double. Then we can output the resulting time. So we'll have printf with execution time colon and then on the next line we'll have percent %f to output the time, followed by s for seconds, followed by a new line with backslash n, and we'll output the time here with comma time. So if we save the program and compile it and run it, we'll get an execution time of 0 0.1871 seconds. Now, what if the loop had, instead of 100 million, let's say two billion iterations? So now if we save the program and compile it and run it, this time it takes a few seconds and we should get here 3.7460, which makes sense. That's about 20 times the previous execution time. So again, the process was to record the start time before executing our section of code. Then we run our section of code then we record the end time after executing our section of code, where end and start are measured in clock ticks. So what we do is divide n minus start by the clock ticks per second to give us the time in seconds. Now, notably, if here we had a call to system to do something like run a command, this could potentially reset the processor time returned by clock which would then break our results. So we can't do this. Another problem with this approach is that the value returned by clock is going to wrap around at some regular interval. So at some regular interval, like for example, 36 minutes or 72 minutes, the clock function is going to return the same value. That means this approach will not be suitable for measuring longer execution times. I'll post a link in the description to more advanced approaches so this is how we can measure the execution time of a section of code using C.
Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.